Hi there, knife people. Hello, lady and gentlemen. Today, I'm circling back to this knife. It's a layup by Kersha in the assisted flipper that I recently reviewed in a short video where I demonstrated how tough this knife actually is. Today, I'm going to show you a couple interesting tricks, but also we're going to find out, is there a truth an advertisement and can you trust anything you see on YouTube I'm saying that because last night I was watching this video a lot of times I feel like I say things on camera and I'm like, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not <laughs> I think from a I don't know from a warranty standpoint we can endorse like changing your knife so to speak but this I've tested it and if you take the the torsion bar out like the assisted mechanism out of it it still it'll perform just like a so you can de-assist the knife de and it'll still it be good it, to go it works good it mm -hmm. works really well i've played with other assisted um crossbar lock style knives and when you de-assist them a lot of times it sometimes feels, it doesn't always work sometimes so it doesn't well, work yeah. but i wanted to find out if the young engineer from kersha was speaking the truth but that's not the only reason i bought uh the layup uh, I have never encountered an assisted knife that can do this. You can just unlock it. It drops about uh, not quite 50%, 40, 45% uh, of the travel. And then you can easily compress it with your finger or your thumb and it closes very nicely. As opposed to a traditional uh, assisted knife where you have to manipulate it a whole lot and practice actually because it doesn't come easy. Uh, why not uh, Kersher Iridium uh, for the same basic manufacturing and same blade steel and almost ba actually shorter, slightly shorter blade? Uh, I would have to pay $20, $24, $24 more, something in that area. Um, and in the end, you're still getting a, a D2 knife made in the People's Republic of China. So what's uh, coming next is a disassembling uh, Kershaw layup for the first time, partially disassembling. I just did enough to uh, remove the assist spring and reassemble it. Uh, it was a trial and error, uh, as many things would do for the first time. But eventually I was able to figure out, and as you can see, the knife is back to being assisted and um, fully functional. I accelerated this video 1.5 times for your time's sake. I always start a disassembly with removal of the pocket clip when possible. The reason is I like to lay my knife flat. And um, for when you disassemble it the first time, I uh, think to remember, the spacers are not captive, so you may need to use two screwdrivers. And as soon as you remove one of these screws, you just voided the warranty. So be advised, uh, if you concern about the warranty, I don't recommend you doing it. Although, I don't know if they would know if you reassemble it with the assist. So uh, they used Loctite as you will see on all screws, which is good. A little bit too much, but not as much as you find on Benchmates sometimes. So it wasn't too much of a struggle. And I am removing the front scale. Uh, the way to tell which scale you need to remove after you remove the pocket clip is the one that shows the blue in the crossbar lock area. And when I dissembled, as you can see, the torsion spring that looks like a snake simply fell out. Uh, there's so much uh, grease on this knife, uh, it was stuck to the scale. And that's how it fell out. And there's like a sort of Kersha's version of Omega spring, but it's more like a C spring. It's no longer an Omega. It's hard for me to tell why there was so much grease on this knife. Maybe the grease manufacturer and uh, production assembly workers were in cahoots to use up as much grease as possible. But uh, it took some doing to get rid of most of it. The reason not to have that much grease in your pocket EDC knife is when you go to hammer your knife into a tree stump, small chunks of bark and wood will get stuck in the mechanism. And that will be very upsetting. 
but not as upsetting as missing my next video or not watching 300 plus videos that are already published because you forgot to subscribe. At least half of my videos contain demonstrations such as this one. I test a lot of newly released knives. I do this so you don't have to. Hoping that this will help you to decide whether or not to buy your next EDC knife. So here you can see how the C-spring is engaging the mechanism, the lever, which connects it to the crossbar. If you watched uh, my video on the Bel Air, you will see that there's a huge difference between this Duralock and the Duralock provided on Bel Air. So the, I think Kersha is using Duralock as a generic term for anything that has a crossbar activation. You need to make sure that the lever engages the crossbar completely, then you can drop the scale on and secure it with the five screws. Once you've done that, here I'm tightening the last screw, the knife should function. Like that Kershaw guy said. This, I've tested it, and if you take the, the torsion bar out, like the assisted mechanism out of it, it still, it'll still perform just like a... So you can de-assist the knife de and it'll still be it. ready to go. Okay, here's a very anemic deploy. Yeah, there's almost no detent, that's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, there's plenty of vertical play in the blade, all because the torsion spring is absent. The limp detent is not only unpleasant, but it's also dangerous. If you're putting the knife in the pocket, you don't want the detent to be limp. That's a problem. Not to mention that the blade is not properly locked and has a lot of vertical play. Um, I tried to torque the screws a little more and uh, that doesn't help the situation at all. So examining it closer, I determined that the crossbar is not fully engaging the ramp on the back of the blade, simply because the blade is not pressed in place like it would be with a torsion spring. There's like no detent. So there's a lot of rattle and free play. I have no choice but to take it apart. And with the last screw out, I am going to pull out the C-spring uh -huh. and uh, maybe try something slightly different. And so what is this, uh, my bright idea? I'm just going to go ahead and stretch, It'll plastically deform this spring to give it a little more tension because I think what's happening, there's not enough compressive force on the springs you know by the way there's a regular omega spring on the other under the other scale on the other side of the knife anyway so a little bit of an increase in the compression ratio of the spring should get me where the crossbar properly engages the back of the blade so I'm about to test this theory so now that the knife is reassembled, I'm ready to try it out. Better. In fact, much better. I would say it's a perfectly normal detent. Let's compare it to other knives, starting with the Kershaw Iridium. I'm specifically interested in detent and function. And as you can see, it's almost the same amount of detent. And now comparing to Benchmade bailout, basically the same amount of detent as any crossbar lock. So I would say this worked out. Why am I taking it apart? Because I don't think it's a good idea to have the knife with the altered spring tension as your EDC. Plus you get to see how to reinstall the torsion spring. Somewhat counterintuitively, the bent end goes into this hole on the blade, seen here, 
and the other end free floats inside the scale. The scale has a sculpting just for that. So now all you have to do is reinstall the C spring and you're ready to assemble. Notice how I did not change the tension back to where it was before. The reason is the more you deform your spring, the less reliable it becomes. So you don't want to, uh, you know, cause plastic deformation once and do it again. You're going to get a uh, fatigue effect from that. So I'm leaving it at a slightly higher tension. And as you can see, it uh, takes a little bit of finagling. Uh, now that I line it up perfectly, and it stay, you know, it stays in place on its own power. You sort of uh, have to remember one important thing. So the blade has to be fully deployed. I tried this uh, in between the attempts uh, with a partially closed blade. It just doesn't work. Uh, you're not building up enough compression on the C-spring for it to hold the blue metal bar in place. So now, uh, back to normal functionality. You don't hear me say fidget factor or drop shattedness on my channel very often, just because I don't assign a lot of importance to these factors. But I have to tell you, I like fidgeting with this knife because this additional need to compress with a thumb or my index finger actually gives me a better sense of positive control. So let me show you again. So when I uh, pull back on the crossbar here, it drops about 45% of the 180 degree rotation. So a little under 90 degrees. Let's call it 80 degree rotation here. And then I can uh, do it very easily, close it with uh, any of my fingers, right? So uh, for comparison, here is a basically almost new out of the box Benchmade 940, which runs on washers. And here's, you know, it's drop shotness. So it goes to about 45 degree angle, but I still, you know, 50, 60% of the time, it doesn't drop shot right away. So I have to either shake it close, which is kind of ridiculously looking move, uh, you know, especially if you're doing it in front of people, you're going to start doing this, kind of looks ridiculous. So, um, you know, you either have to wrist it in, which sounds stressful on the knife, or you drop it to where it goes, release the crossbar, and then close it uh, controllably, well, with control, the rest of the way. So, you know, I'm not trying to sell you on this knife. <clears throat> Do I like it better than Benchmade knives? Nah, you know, it's a great knife um, for much less money. It's even less than the Iridium. I definitely, if I was choosing between this and the Iridium, this would be a no-brainer for me. Uh, you don't buy Iridium because you try to impress somebody with a overpriced knife in your pocket. You buy Iridium because you're a budget-minded person with a safe operation in mind. And this knife gets you there for 20, 25 bucks less. So, um, as you will see, there are no links affiliated or otherwise to any of the sites that sell this knife. Uh, it's going to be commonly available just about everywhere that, where they sell knives. So, um, and I am an independent channel, um, which is not relying on knife sales to, to make a living. Therefore, uh, the only thing I ask you to do is uh, hit a like button. And speaking of salesmanship, um, let's circle back to that conversation. And um, let me tell you this, this is just a marketing ploy a little bit. Yes, you can convert your knife to do that, but um, why would you want to do so?